Now we're going to look a bit more in depth at the structure of these noun phrases and in particular where it is that we're going to put these elements, these determiners that frequently occur at the left edge of the noun phrase. So elements like the or a or this or these or those or that. A question that any syntactician would ask about these is where exactly in the, in the structure they are. And there are two hypotheses that one could entertain. The first hypothesis would be to suppose that that determiner is in the specifier position of the noun phrase. One reason one might think that the determiner is in the specifier position of the noun phrase is that it is in complementary distribution with these subject type noun phrases, the possessors inside, inside the noun phrase which look as though they should be in a specifier position. So we get things like the girl's admiration of the picture or the admiration of the picture. And we see they're in complementary distribution because you can have one, that is to say, you can have one or the other, but not both together. So you can have Michael's book or the book, but you can't have Michael's the book or the Michael's book in English. So determiners and these possessive noun phrases are in complementary distribution and the typical explanation for complementary distribution is there's a single position and these two different items are, are competing for that position. So you can have one but not the other. So that would give us a structure where the determiner is in the specifier position of the noun phrase. But if we just put the determiner on its own in the specified position of the noun phrase, we actually have a structure which is not consistent with X-bar theory as we've been looking at it so far. Because what our X-bar schema has given us is structures where you have the head of a phrase, it may or may not have a complement, it may or may not have a specifier, but those, the complement and the specifier where they occur are themselves phrases, not just heads but full phrases. So we can't just have the determiner as the specifier of the noun phrase. One way we could deal with this is to say, well, this is a case where the determiner, it's just the, the limit case where the determiner is projecting a whole phrase, a whole DP. It just happens that it doesn't have a complement and it doesn't have a specifier. So the whole phrase consists only of the determiner. And that would resolve the problem for X-bar theory. But it has worried people that in all of these cases with these determiners, so with the and a uh and this and that and those and these, all of these, we're only seeing the determiner. We're not seeing it with any other material. So that looks a little bit suspicious if we're saying that it's a full phrase. And that's one of the reasons that people have come up with an alternative hypothesis about the structure of these phrases with nouns in them. The second hypothesis then that one might have about the structure of um, uh, the structure of nominals and as to in particular as to where the determiner is is to say that rather having the determiner projected determiner phrase which is the specifier of the noun phrase instead to suppose that the determiner is a head that takes the noun phrase as its complement. The effect of that would be if we're sticking with X-bar theory, would be to say that the structures which up to now we've been calling noun phrases are in fact determiner phrases. They're projections of the determiner. That determiner takes the noun phrase as its complement. The idea that what we've been calling noun phrases up to now are really determiner phrases, that is that the determiner takes a noun phrase as its complement and projects a determiner phrase, has been called the DP hypothesis. If that hypothesis is correct, we actually have a very close correspondence between the structure of sentences and the structure of noun phrases. So in the case of sentences, they're built up around verb phrases. We have a verb that projects a verb phrase. And then that verb phrase is the complement of a functional head, inflection or infill or I. In the case now of a DP, so in the nominal domain, we have a noun phrase projected by a noun. That noun phrase is then the complement of a functional head. 
a D in this case, that takes the, the noun phrase as its complement. So the noun corresponds to the verb, the D corresponds to I. We have an inf uh, a functional category taking a projection of a lexical category as its complement in both cases. At this point, we should go back and consider how we're going to analyze cases where instead of just a determiner, we have a possessor. We could say, or we might think of saying, that, well, we have evidence for the DP hypothesis where we've got a terminal like the or this, but that uh, in the case of where we have a possessor, that that possessive phrase is in the specifier of the NP. That's how we started out. But that would mean that where we have the possessor, we have an, a whole NP, whereas when we have the determiner, we have a DP. That would mean that where we have um, Mary's collection of mushrooms with a possessor, that would be an NP, and the collection of mushrooms with a determiner would be a DP. That would give them different categories. But that's the wrong answer, because those two cases have exactly the same distribution. So phrases where you've got a possessor and phrases where you just have a determiner, overall they have the same distribution. And so we want to say they have the same category. So we'd like them both to be DPs. How is that going to work out in the case of possessors? Well, one hypothesis here is to say that that clitic z, the thing that expresses possession, to take that to be a D. That would mean that in, a, in the case of Mary's collection of mushrooms, that z would be the D, where Mary would actually occur in the specifier position of the DP. This analysis would still give us an explanation for the complementary distribution of determiners like this and that and possessors like Mary's. The, the whole possessor is not occupying the same position as the determiner, but that little z element is. So you can have one or the other, but not both. So we still retain that explanation. It's also completely consistent with this that the possessor doesn't have to be just a word like Mary that specified position is a position for phrases, and indeed we can have full phrases there. So as well as Mary's collection of mushrooms, we can have something like my friend's collection of mushrooms, um, as well as uh, Joanna's hat, we can have the Duchess of Cambridge's hat. So the possessor is, as we expect under this analysis, is, can be a full phrase itself because it's occupying a specifier position. We've seen that just as in verb phrases, so too in noun phrases, it seems that there can be arguments of the head. So the, a verb like hate takes two arguments, uh, an experiencer and a theme, and the experiencer is, uh, is what appears to, as the subject, whereas the theme is what appears as the object. So in a sentence like, the cat hates the dog, we can only interpret it as the cat experiencing some emotion with respect to the dog. This tensense doesn't tell us anything about how the dog feels about the cat. In exactly the similar way, where we have a nominal, we have something like the cat's hatred of the dog. And again, that initial noun phrase is ex um, expresses the experiencer. It's the cat that is experiencing the emotion and it's the dog that's arousing the emotion, and that's fixed for those two positions. In the case of verb phrases, we captured this by saying that lexical items are, uh, are stored in the mental lexicon of speakers along with the information about the phrases that they select. And those phrases that they select are also phrases that they assign thematic roles to. So that information is what you find in the elementary tree associated with each lexical item. So we've seen that there's an elementary tree for hate, which has a complement, um, we would now say DP, which is the thing is, and, and that expresses a theme, the thing that uh, is hated, and a specifier DP, and that is going to be the position for the DP which uh, expresses the uh, the entity that experiences the emotion. Since we see exactly those same arguments in the case of the nominal, we'd want to say that 
the noun hatred also has an elementary tree where we see the phrases that it selects. In this case, it selects the PP headed by of as its complement, and then it also selects a specifier, which is what um, expresses the, the experience in, in this case. It's going to, that's going to be where you find the DP that corresponds to the, the person or entity experiencing the emotion. So that would give us an elementary tree for the noun phrase with a specifier and a complement. We've seen then to build up a sentence, you construct it from these elementary trees. So you'll have the VP for the verb hate. It will have slots for DPs, so you'll substitute in arguments into those slots. And then we also have the functional head I. It has a slot for a VP, so those, those combine. And you have the I taking the VP as its complement. And then as a final step, the, the specifier of the VP moves to become the specifier of the IP. We build up the nominal in exactly the same way. So you have an elementary tree for the noun. It has slots for the arguments, in this case a PP and a DP. So you put elements into those argument slots. Just as the VP then combined with the elementary tree associated with I, so this noun phrase is going to combine with the elementary tree associated with the determiner, with the D. So those will then get, those will then combine and we'll have a structure for a projected by the D, the D bar with the determiner and the, uh, and the noun phrase in this case. But now it looks like we have a problem because we've got the wrong order. We've got Z and then the subject and then the rest of the n bar. That is to say, we've got something like z cat hatred of the dog. And that's clearly the wrong order. But if you think about it, that's exactly the same problem that we had in the case of the sentence. We had reason to think that the subject of the sentence originates in the VP, but that puts the subject on the wrong side of that inflection element. It's all, it would come after a modal like will, where we've seen that it comes before. The way we solve that in the case of the sentence is to hypothesize that the subject of a VP moves to become the subject of the IP. And we can use exactly the same solution in the case of a nominal. So we'd say that the subject of the NP moves to become the subject of the DP. And that then will give us, will give us the right order for the DP and it will also give us a tree which reflects the selectional properties of the heads in that structure. The fact that the, that possessor noun phrase is actually an argument of the noun. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.